Hello everyone, uh, it's John Gillian here again with my fabulous co-host Gruesome Outsog tonight, a very special guest from the great movie Suspiria we have Barbara Minarfly how are you doing Barbara? Hi, I'm great thank you, how about you John? Yeah, I'm great it's uh, great okay. to have you on the show with us how are you Scott? Good, great, thank you. Well, thank you cool. for having me. <laughs> no problem at all. It's uh-huh. great to have you on. I'd uh, like to run through a few of your films. We've picked out a few, if that's okay with you. Uh-huh. First one uh, we'd like to cover, Suspicious Death of a Minor. Yeah, <laughs> that was my very first official one, Sergio Martino. And... Yeah. Um, was great. I I was I had done a movie before, but I was just a kid then. And um, but um, some friend of mine told me, you know, there there could be something in this, and I I think I just got my first agent. And uh, so basically, I I landed this this role, <laughs> my official debut. <laughs> It was awesome. It was a great team of people on that movie. Actors and uh, Sergio was uh, very, very good. I really found myself at ease, you know, even though it was the first, um, you know, official thing. Um, he made it very um, comfortable, easy. And so I was, it, it was a great experience. And... I worked with um, Claudio Cassinelli, who uh, I knew already, and we became friends. And he he was like a uh, almost a mentor to me. He really supported me and um, he pushed me in into um, you know when I was having a hard time. He, he, he continued to motivate me to continue on this road. You know, uh, with a legend, uh, Mel Mel Ferrer. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now, Mel, I didn't have much. Uh, well, of course, I met him. I were on the set together, but uh, we we didn't um, shoot particularly scenes together. But um, so I didn't have much of a uh, not a lot of interaction with him, but I did meet him. Right. Yeah. What was the experience like for you to meet Mel? I mean, even if it's briefly. Uh, he was like a, uh, <laughs> how do I put it, like a lord, you know? Yeah. Like yep. a, um, he was like, um, he, he seemed very high. You see what I'm saying? Yes. He's like, yes. He was like, um, um, but very, very kind, very gentle, uh, a gentleman. Um that's uh, that's how I saw him, you know. Like that, that's how I remember him when I first, uh, you know, met him. Well, that's cool. And, yeah, and uh, very, yeah. I, as I said, I didn't have much interaction other than meeting him on set, and so, but uh, definitely a good impression. Cool. I mean, it, that's got to be a, a, a memory for you um, to meet you know, your first film. You know, mm-hmm. and, and to be in a film with, in my opinion, a legend in the film yeah, industry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's kind of a, of a neat experience. Whether or not you had a, a scene with them or not, but you were still in the same film. And that's something that you'll always have for the rest of your life. You know what I mean? Yes, indeed, I do. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, the, the, next uh-huh. film, the next film I just watched uh, last night and finished watching this morning, Suspiria 1977. Uh, That's right. Dario Argento is a god when it comes to um, his style of horror films, Italian horror films in the 70s, and and even going to the 80s and some in the 90s. uh, The guy is remarkable. And I didn't know... I I started watching this film, and I'll let you talk about this, but one of the things that brought my attention the most about this film is the colors in that film the pink mm-hmm. the red the orange it's very yeah. bright and very creepy yeah. and then you played Olga um, mm-hmm. $50 uh, 
for a motel, <laughs> for a room. Uh, for any performance, by the way. So go ahead and give the listeners an idea of your experience in Suspiria, you know, and, and, and what it was like. Well, Suspiria. Well, first of all, Dario wasn't looked that way at the time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, little did we know that Suspiria was going to become like a classic, you know, in, in horror films. Mm -hmm. But um, so the way I got into Suspiria was I got uh, called. My urgent call by my agent that said, you've got to come back because I was somewhere in Spain uh, for the weekend. And uh, I say, you must come back. Um, Dario Argento wants to see you uh, in his office uh, as soon as possible. So I was on the next plane and uh, I didn't know much about Dario Argento at the time, right? Right, right. Uh, and I, I kind of... Uh, I said, uh, what the hell, you know, I, I need to go play, <laughs> Interrupt, you know, who the heck is Dario Argento, what, you know, what's so important. So anyway, I get into the office, uh, into the production office, and uh, I meet Dario the morning after, and uh, Dario is, uh, was very particular, and uh, he he uh, he gave me this uh, script. He says, "So how do you see this uh, this character? Like, like right away, like that, right?" <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, hmm, "Well, let's see." And I came up with something. I see her like this, like that. And then he puts me in the middle of the room, and he he has me move, right? Nothing else, right? And he started going around me and getting excited, right? He was getting very excited. And uh, so that's how I got the role, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he I was love kind it. of creepy. He was jumping and being like, oh, you know, um, but excited. So, and then, you know, uh, as well as getting the role, uh, we became friends. We we were friends, you know, during the before the shoot and and long after. That's cool. But um, um, well, Suspiria. Well, the, the first day I got on the set, I I met um, uh, John Bennett on the set. Oh right? wow, that's a legend. <laughs> I was like, is this real or am I dreaming <laughs> or you know? Wow. Um, it was incredible and Jessica Harper Alida Valli I mean I was like wow so um, the sets were like uh, intimidating you know because yeah. they were like the very high very gothic very it, it, there was a special atmosphere on the set um and with you know working with Dario was like um, he is very 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 uh, particular. He, he looks at everything. He's very perfectionist. So um, you know there was almost like a a, a dead silence when you know right when right and scenes and. Um, and at the same time, um, it was like uh, cre creepy in a way, <laughs> you know. It was like it was like a mixture of uh, being an amazing experience and uh, also like uh, you could feel the, the the how can I put it like the tension almost. Yeah, uh, yeah. On the set and. Um, uh, it was amazing. It, Suspiria was like magic for me because not only um, uh, <laughs> it, it did what it did, Suspiria, but uh, you know, it keeps going on. Yeah, yeah. It keeps going on because this film became uh, humongous, became a classic everywhere in the world where I've been. Uh, there's been lots of fans, but not just of Dario fans but of this particular movie right now you know? 
what, how long, I mean, if you can remember, how long did this movie take to really become a, a, a classic icon film? Well, I think at the at first, uh, at least in Italy, it was rejected. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Check, I was horrible. Dario Argento was a monster. You know, <laughs> uh, I think I believe that actually it did better in France when it came out in France than it did in Italy at first. And um, how long did it take to to become a classic? I don't know. <laughs> Many I'll... years, I think. Yeah. yeah, it is a but great that, film, though. Yeah, and also, you know, it's the last um, film um, uh, shot, you know, with Technicolor. That's why these colors are impossible to to um, duplicate. Beautiful. You know, they, they're not. Uh, they there were so many things, and then the music. It was a combination. So Spear was a combination Goblin. of great, great, yeah, the goblins and the. Um, the Technicolor, these colors that were pushed to, to you know, for me it's like, um, it's almost like a, uh, in between like a, a canvas, you know, where, you know, you, you throw color and yeah. an opera, you know, it's just, just not a, Suspiria, it's, it's a movie on, on in, of its kind. Yes. <laughs> Even uh, out of Dario Argento's movies, you know, I, I, uh, I like Suspiria, not because I'm in it, but uh, I think it's one of his best films. Yeah, that, that got, the last one that got killed. But I can remember when she's in the hallway, she's all orange, then she's all I red. Love I love that. That is such a, a, a rarity. It's just a beautiful film. Yeah, yeah, and as I said, it's the last film shot mm-hmm. in Technicolor. It doesn't exist anymore. Right. You can't do it anymore, so... Well, I think they they just got into the last last uh, you know they were able to 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 use Technicolor. It's a beautiful film. Congratulations, yeah. by the way, a great job in there too. Oh, thank you, thank you. No problem. My favorite bit in the film. <coughs> I don't know if in that sort of film is supposed to be comedy, but the irony of the dog that's wearing a red cross badge and it's tearing out the throat of his owner I'm sure, I'm sure that that was you know there was, a, there was a little bit something there when when you made, when you was making that film did you have any idea of you know that many years later that it was still going to be regarded so highly oh uh, not quite but uh of course, I did, um, you know, the best I could. I, I, you know, we all. There was a sense on the set, though, that something big was happening there. You know, we didn't, thought, we didn't have any idea that it was going to become what it became. But I think that there was a sense of like, wow, this is, a, <laughs> this is a huge thing. Mm. Yeah. You know, but, it was a big, it was an important production. There were like amazing, you know, legends on the set. Oh, I mean, mm. some part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can imagine the experience that you had in Madame Joan Bennett. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, John mm. Bennett. Wow, well, I oh. only met her briefly, but I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, it was like Hollywood legend right yeah. there. Yeah. You know, in it was incredible. Yeah, it was. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mhm. I, th- I think you can. I think Cruz would agree with me as well. Is that from watching it, you can see that definitely a lot of other filmmakers have been somewhat influenced by this film or parts of this film. Just some of the way that it's filmed, some of the camera angles, the bit that comes oh, to yeah. mind. Is when the two ladies are swimming in the pool. All of a sudden, the camera's up above them. It it goes forward and it's down, and the music comes on. But the the scene doesn't end. We're back in the pool, and the conversation's continuing. Just so beautifully filmed. 
Yeah, so, and I know I see it all the time when you know I say, oh, what well, that they took that from Suspiria. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. I, I forgot what movie I was what movie I was watching, and I said, oh my god, that reminds me of like that scene in Suspiria. You know, definitely, definitely, they they've taken many have taken from. I can tell you another camera shot that I, I think the Italians use a lot is. When they're in that room and the camera is facing through the lamp, the light, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. the camera just glides down gradually, it, that's just, just a, a unique camera angle. It gives you yeah. that. It gives you that feel like something bad's going to happen, but you don't know when. It's just a, but mm -hmm. the Italians, and the British, the Australians. They have their own style of filmmaking. Now, John doesn't agree with me because John lives in England, so he sees our film. It's vice versa. But to mm -hmm. be able to watch their – every filmmaker's style is different from other countries, and Italians really got their shit together. I think they're more uh, more advanced than yeah, – Well, I wish that um, it came back to that, you see, because – I believe that uh, yeah, there's great talent, you know, in yeah. filmmaking, and uh, in Italy, and um, and you know, it need there needs to be more, yeah. you know, because lately, you know, there hasn't been much from Italy, but you know, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came back here to. To shake it a bit, like <laughs> there you go. No, seriously, seriously, I like to see some of that kind of uh, filmmaking again right. from Italy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and uh, I agree. You know, Americans they make their movie, but it's um, you know, it is what it is. That's my saying. It is what it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. No, I agree with you. <laughs> All right. Um, and the next film that I have not seen, um, it is a drama romance. I mean, um, I will watch it just because of uh, connection with Dar I mean, connection with with you. And mm -hmm. it's called Ready for Anything in '77. Now, this is completely different than what we talked about. But uh, yes. what's, what's <laughs> your experience? <laughs> but you know, I am. I am. I did many different things. So. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm not... Uh, of course, it's a different genre of film completely. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that is... Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, I play, you know, um, the girlfriend, friend, you know, neighbor of uh, Eleonora oh, Giorgi. Yeah. Uh, who basically is having a dubious relationship with a guy that, uh, you know, it's it's a bit of a crazy story, right? Um, and um, um can't say much about that film, you know? It was just, a, I did it, and um, uh, Apparently, you know, I get compliments. I look very good in the film, but, <laughs> I, uh, you know, it was just um, something I did that, uh, a job. Right. Did the Suspiria help you to get a part in this film, or was it before? Because they're both listed in 77. Uh, mm, no. Suspiria... Could have helped me a great deal more, actually. I believe that uh, when I did, I don't remember if I shot this one. No, I think I shot this one before, before Suspiria. But uh, Suspiria could have helped me at the time, right? If I had, uh, I believe it had, if I had better uh, agent management at the time, right? Right. Uh, I could have made a jump at that time. Uh, to the, the to be you know international you know to go to Hollywood or to be in the United States then right and uh, and the choices that that uh, were made or that were suggested to me after that weren't the right ones as far as I'm concerned right. yeah all right.
the next film um, I have not seen either. It's a drama, which I like drama films. It's called Blazing Flowers in 78. Now, yes. what was your experience like in Blazing Flowers? Uh, it was great. Blazing Flowers was great, actually. It was, um, was a, a, sm- a little giallo that I actually have seen again many times, right? Right. And... Um, I it was a very good like the the team the crew everybody was like uh, excellent you know and I work with um, uh, Marc Porel and uh, Al Cleaver and uh, oh yeah Al Cleaver yeah jo- yeah George Hilton uh, was in the movie as well. Uh, it was it was an excellent little giallo, no? crime crime movie. Right. And I play um, a sixteen year old. I was older than. <laughs> I play a sixteen year old, <laughs> basically uh, 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 falls in love with uh, the character who played by Mark Porel, and. Um, uh, it was a great. It was a great. Uh, I enjoyed that movie very much for for whatever reason. You know, the te- the whole team was very. Um, we worked well together. Right. They were. We worked well together. We had fun, and uh, it was great. It was a great. Uh, and uh, you know, the role. It's a. Uh, I like to play different characters, and so that gave me the the, the opportunity to play, uh, you know, this young uh, uh, girl, you know, right. falling in love and discovering all sorts of things, and and um, I enjoyed very much that movie. All right. Well, the the, the next one it's called The Sister of Ursula in '78. Um, oh my goodness! <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's going to get your response out of me when I said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, la sorella di Ursula, yeah. <laughs> well, well, let's see. <laughs> it, what it was supposed to be was excellent. The, 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 la sorella, the, the sister of Ursula was supposed to be like a, a psychological thriller which I actually did a lot of uh, studying about the character. Okay, right? right. And I prepared, and, you know, I, I really got into it, and so forth. And then, uh, halfway through the movie, while we were shooting in beautiful location in Amalfi, in Italy, um, I remember the producer and director were sitting at the bar or the restaurant at some point and I, I was wondering what they were discussing right and apparently what they were discussing was that uh, they decided to, to add some sex <laughs> uh oh to make it more spicy right <laughs> and um, in, in order to make more money actually more profit and uh, they didn't tell me anything they didn't tell Mark anything. Basically, the leading characters, they didn't tell anything to us. And um, so, you know, we shot the movie and so forth, and there were some killings, and I was starring in this movie, by the way. Yeah. And, and, um, And then I was horrified when I find out, you know, the poster changed. Uh, the title changed everything changed and I'm like when I saw the movie I realized that they added stuff that wasn't supposed to be there right and uh, I was not pleased mm. I was I can, not pleased I, I, I can see that because um, yeah but when I seen the trailer um, I'm thinking what is this a freaking porn, a porn film <laughs> <laughs> I said, wow. I mean, I mean, it's misleading, and like you said, um, yeah, it's misleading because if I, I don't know if you ever seen the, 
the actual poster, the original poster, and the film was called originally, what I read, what I agreed to do, was called Eyes. Oh. It wasn't called Ursula's Sister, okay? And, uh, or the Sister of Ursula. And uh, it had a poster with uh, basically my eyes and uh, basically it was a different film um, what was it like filming that film <laughs> great location <laughs> no, shooting the film was fine was fine shooting the film was okay it, it is what happened um uh, covertly underneath <laughs> you know <laughs> the actual uh, uh, the shooting of the film um, so basically I was telling Scott right that uh, you know in um, the movie had a different title the movie had a different poster and then you know mid uh, shooting uh, the, they decided to add some sex and uh, I didn't know about that. They didn't ask for my agreement. And, um, that is crazy. And basically, you know, it turned out to be a crappy movie, as what? far as I'm concerned. <laughs> the sad part about it is is you're the lead in the movie. I know, but that's the bad part about it. Oh, man. That's the, that's the bad part, because they used, obviously, they used uh, my name at the time, Right. Right. Because I was, you know, pretty, you know, after Suspiria, I was pretty on the scene at the time. Right. And, um, and you know, and Mark as well, Mark Borel was also. Yeah. And uh, they used our names to promote this movie and even to come out on a div- with a DVD in USA like a couple of years ago. And uh, I was horrified. Wow. You know, they, they contacted me to do um, uh, behind the scene, you know, like the addition to the DVD, right? Right, right. <laughs> to the making of the... Uh, and I refused. Good I refused. You. I said, that's not the movie I shot. I'm not going to endorse that movie. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. It's a shame because I think, uh, you know, I did a pretty good job and I could have been... What it originally was, it would have been better. Right. The question, yeah. I wanna, the question I want to ask you now. I have not seen his films. I don't know. But were you made to get nude for this film? No. Okay. I never. No. Thank no. God. Good. No, thank God for that. Good. Good. Please, and that would have been. That would have been. I, I would have definitely uh, done something if. Okay. You know, I was, I was with I, Warner's. So I hope not. Okay. No, 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 no. The only nude you see of me in that film is like a little bit of breast because I'm, you know, coming, sitting on the bed. I get kind of. Uh, that's it. Right. Okay. Yeah. That that wouldn't go over very well with your family, would it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> No, uh, I mean, yes, but the, but you know it it wasn't it wasn't right. It was like um, a low move, you know, something. Uh, it is some kind of a betrayal, you know, something that uh, yeah, a stab in the back because you know using someone's name to to promote a movie that is not what I signed for. That's not okay. That's total crap. That's- yeah. Cut and run. Cut and run. Yeah, cut and run got me to the to the states. Mm-hmm. Cut and run. Um, I um, I had gone through some uh, uh, tough tough times, you know. And Ruggiero called me in and he said, you know, you need to. I'd like you to do something in my film and I read for a different character but my English at the time wasn't good enough to hold uh, but he said but you know I'm going to give you something anyway and uh, I was very happy um, to do to do this because it took me to to Miami we worked with um, uh, um 
you know, I wanted to go to the to the States, you know. Absolutely. I wanted to work internationally. So we work, you know, I, I work with Lisa Blount, you know, Leonard Mann and, uh, you know, a lot of people, Richard Lynch, you know, all the, uh, lots of um, uh, people that uh, uh, I definitely uh, respected. And uh, it was a fun experience in Miami. Yeah, I had lots of fun in the movie. And, and you know, I was thankful to... Um, I made some uh, some good friends, you know, like in in uh, in the States yeah. at the time. And I, I remember uh, being there in Miami shooting and... Uh, <laughs> and, so, and I'm pinned on the floor, right? Because I get killed in a in a very bad way. Right? Yes, I saw that. And uh, yeah, and so I couldn't move from there because you know the makeup they did that took hours to put those knives in my in my knee in my thighs above my knees, right? Right, right. I couldn't move, so people had to bring me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to bring me the stuff there, so I had a crowd around of people, right, including um, Lisa, that Lisa Blount, right, yeah. and, and there that man that were play were were shooting with me there, um, you know, like all around me because I couldn't move, so I spent the day pinned to the floor to shoot that scene. <laughs> It was crazy. Uh, that's and terrible. All the guys outside that were trying to look in because I was basically half naked, if not all naked, <laughs> and uh, and uh, it was crazy. It was, but it was all good. It was hot. It was like Miami, but I loved it. Right. I loved, I loved the whole the whole thing. And I, I remember, uh, I said I will be back. I definitely be back. And in fact, I was back many years later, but I was back. <laughs> yeah, many years, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, but I'll say this: um, I met Michael Berryman uh, uh -huh. in the beginning of September, and we talked about cut and run. And uh, he, yeah, yeah, he, he talked about. He said that he had to take uh, medicine because he's in that water, so he wouldn't get no diseases. It was crazy. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was crazy. But it was crazy <laughs> wild, definitely. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Ruggiero also is a different character than um, than Dario and then uh, Sergio Martino. You know, he, he he he's pretty impulsive. He's pretty. Um, he could get mad. Ruggiero could get mad, and in you know, he's impatient. Yep. Yeah. And uh, but we had lots of we you know I love him I mean he uh, he still we're still friends you know we're still right. good friends. yeah but um, I definitely uh, enjoyed the, the the Miami shoot for sure Cut and Run was was great yeah excellent yeah uh, Noise Matters from 2013. Noise matters. I did, uh, you know, is a, is a friend of mine, Matthias Masucci, who is a young uh, cinematographer and actor as well, uh, and director. And he asked me to do. It was basically um, he asked me to do a thing. Uh, play this uh, this crazy character of a basically a lady almost like a gypsy um, <laughs> it was a very small thing it was a cameo role you know a cameo not, right. not much more but but just because he asked me and I said uh, okay I'll do it right and uh, I like him as a as a director um, and Basically, the, I play um, this crazy lady uh, <clears throat> who is at um, at a meeting, like a, it's not an AA meeting, like for Alco Alcoholics Anonymous, but it's for people who have been abducted by aliens. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so I, wow. it's a very funny scene at the at this meeting. And uh, so that's all I do in that movie, but it's it's quite hilarious. <laughs> it's quite hilarious, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's still in the movie, the whole scene, but uh, definitely uh, was was fun. It was great. And uh, you know, we <clears throat> I'm gonna be working with um, with him again. We, we've been trying to to work again together, you know, and do something more. Disciples, which is a film we're starting to hear a lot about. Yeah, Disciples. That yeah, that's that still has to come out. I believe soon yeah. will come out. And um, <clears throat> yeah, Disciples was um, Joe Harlow contacted me, and it was actually Linnea Quigley who you know <clears throat> yeah. put us in touch, and then um, I did this. Um, this role that um, very interesting very interesting role <laughs> uh, and, and you know I came back into that's a horror you know yep. as well um, and um, though I don't particularly like uh, American horror but uh, you know I, I like the team there was a great team uh, Joe is wonderful, the director, you know, a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, Linnea Quigley, Brinkus Stevens, Deborah Lamb, Tony Todd, you know, Bill Mosley, a lot of people, uh, a lot of great actors in horror. So, and they were, you know, absolutely loved working with me because they were all fans of Suspiria, right? Oh, that's cool. And, yeah, so that's cool, and uh, I hope the movie actually gets. I'm, I'm not sure it has distribution or not yet. Um, I think so. It's, it's ready to go now, and um, I'd love to to see it out. Me too. Because it's uh, yeah, and I play a character that may come back. A sequel. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have to see about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then I've got more projects coming up. Go for it, if you can talk yeah. about them. In Europe. And then I got an offer. I'm going to be doing uh, a role in, uh, in, a, in um, the Profane Exhibit. Uh, this is a producer called David Bond. Okay. And uh, he he's uh, actually doing a project that uh, plans to be uh, involving a lot, mostly uh, Italian directors of the genre. Oh, cool. So Martino, Deodato, Stivaletti is involved with it, Sergio Stivaletti, Luigi Cozzi, Aldo Lado, all these people are involved with it. And uh, so that, that's promising. And uh, so while here, basically I've been reconnecting, as I said, with everybody here, including my um, my agent, who uh, you know has uh, some. Uh, hopefully, it's something will come out of this uh, trip, you know, to Good Italy, deal. to Ruggiero. Yes. Yeah. Have you? How's he doing? He's doing great. He's working nonstop. That guy. <laughs> He's, <laughs> He does everything. I bet. He, <laughs> he doesn't stop working. It's like uh, you know, uh, we we were out um, we were out uh, for dinner and with uh, Claudio. Claudio Simonetti organized this. Cool. And um, he surprised me. He said, "Look who is here!" And so Ruggero was there as well. And. That's excellent. Yeah, the channel is working nonstop, and also they think they did a tour in US now for you know conventions and film festivals and. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a lot of conventions myself, like in 2011 and 12. I did quite a few conventions in in um, in US. Right, just got a couple more questions, just in mm -hmm. case. I usually save this for last, but just in case my Skype goes once again, uh, can I ask if you have a favourite horror film? A favourite horror film? 
Suspiria. Yes. <laughs> See, no, but it's true. It's true. Yeah. It is my favorite horror film. Okay, yeah. that's cool. It's Suspiria. It's truly, truly. Yeah. Because well, I, after after you know watching it myself, I can I can see why it's up there. Uh, what for the people that enjoy Italian horror, they love it. Mm-hmm. So, in your opinion, what is it about Italian horror that makes it special? Ah, okay. I think um, Italian horror is more refined. Is more uh, thoughtful in a way that um, the you know the is based more on the on the suspense and on the feeling of building that suspense mm-hmm. and it's not so obvious like you know I've seen some some movies like for instance American Horror. Uh, shot, right? Uh, I believe it's the way it's, you know, it's I I can generalize because it depends on the director as well, but I believe that uh, the horror, Italian horror and originally the giallos and they're unique. They're the first, you know, what what then became you know crime movies and mystery and so you know they all basically that that was the the beginning the giallos I believe that the, is, is the story the the way of um, of shooting it that is um, not so, is more refined it's more quality it's not so much quantity you know uh, blood and uh, you know, is 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 although there is blood as well, right? Right. But, uh, it's more tasteful. It's more thought out. It's smarter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thank, thank you, Barbara. I really enjoyed it. I just uh-huh. really enjoyed spending time talking to you. Oh, thank you, thank you, guys. Yeah, Barbara, it was great chatting with you. Uh, you're a wonderful guest, an interesting person, and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. No problem, Barbara. Take care. Okay. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.